Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staber, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. A Missouri judge blocks a law that restricts teachers' private information and in chats on Facebook. We'll talk about it today on Faith and Freedom. I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. Matt, this sounds like uh, Act 2 in the situation where we worked with Jerry Buell in Florida, and the school district down there temporarily suspended him from the classroom because of comments that he made on Facebook with respect to opposing the New York same-sex marriage law. Now, fortunately, we were able to get involved, and we reversed that. He's back in the classroom. A lot of national media came about as a result of that. Well, here now in Missouri, there was a law that prohibits teachers from having private online conversations with students, and a judge blocked it from taking effect. And the governor is now calling for its repeal. Yeah, Jerry Buell, of course, a social studies uh, teacher there in in Florida, he ended up having to teach his own school district a lesson about the First Amendment. Of course, with uh, with Liberty Council at his side, justice was served there. An attempt to trample free speech on Facebook, which is kind of a you know this modern technology with uh, with social networking and so forth. There, there's a in the minds of some people some gray area, but people need to understand the First Amendment applies to social networking sites just as it does any other form of speech. And Jerry Buell prevailed and the First Amendment prevailed in that situation. But now we see more and more of these cases popping up. And this one here in Missouri, yet another judge is saying, hey, the First Amendment is is absolute. Free speech uh, is not to be curbed or chilled by people just because they don't like what's being said or they don't like the venue uh, in which it's being said. That's right. Now, the, uh, the apparently there's a lot of people now calling for the repeal. Even one of the sponsors of this, Senator Jane Cunningham, said she's already been working with education groups on a potential compromise that would repeal the existing law and replace it with a less specific requirement for local school districts to develop policies about teacher-student communications. That's what they should have done in the first place. You ought to have certain policies. But to, brought, to, to completely ban private discussions on Facebook, well, why don't they ban private discussions after class? Why don't they ban private discussions when you at the run into a student yeah. out at a 7-Eleven or a restaurant? Right. I mean, that's, that's as ridiculous as banning these private discussions on Facebook. What you do is you ultimately say you can't engage in certain inappropriate uh, contact uh, with them. Uh, you, you know, you, you, there's certain ways to be able to do that without trampling on free speech. But this law clearly trampled on free speech. The judge did the right thing in blocking it. It was scheduled to go into effect just before school starts, uh, but the judge ultimately blocked it, so it is not in effect now. Well, can we use a little common sense? I mean, seriously, if, if, you, if you run into a student at the Safeway and a teacher engages in a conversation where things that are inappropriate are said, uh, in, in, in inappropriate and in, in unbecoming of, of, of a teacher and having a conversation, you know, sexual in nature or or somehow something that violates school policy. Well, well, certainly that can be looked at on an, a case by case basis to see if there's a specific violation of some kind of policy. But but to blatant to just broadly say that a student, if he happens to run into uh, a teacher at the Safeway, that there can be no conversation whatsoever. That's exactly what this law did with, with Facebook, said that students can't have communi- with teachers communication on on Facebook. And that just doesn't make any sense. And clearly that uh, runs afoul of the First Amendment. No question. And, and that's exactly what happened in our case with Jerry Buell. Jerry is a teacher. He was um, awarded Teacher of the Year, and that's difficult to do. I mean, he's Teacher of the Year. Out of all the teachers in his school, he was awarded Teacher of the Year. So obviously he did a good job in the classroom, and the students and the parents and everyone else liked him. But on his own private time on Facebook, he's not acting as a teacher. He's not indicating that he's speaking as a teacher or on behalf of the school. He says that 
he is opposed to what just happened in New York, which was the New York same-sex marriage law. And as a result, they suspend him and they make a public spectacle out of him like they're going to punish him for his free speech on marriage, which is ironic in itself because he lives in a state, Florida, where the state constitutional amendment was passed in 2008 that says marriage is only between a man and a woman and Florida doesn't recognize any counterfeit marriages, any similar marriage under the name of marriage or under some other name that looks like marriage. He's living in that kind of a state, which is the law in that state. Uh, you obviously uh, have him making these comments in a state where not only most people agree with him, but obviously it's a state where the law protects marriage. And then they discipline him. So Liberty Council gets involved. Fortunately, we, re we reverse it. Uh, but they did this, I think, to silence him. They did not silence him. And in fact, their <laughs> tactics went nationwide. Well, and their tactics backfired magnificently. And, uh, you know, contrary to a liberals' misconception, the First Amendment does not guarantee that liberals uh, won't be offended. It doesn't guarantee that they have a right not to be offended, and it doesn't guarantee that all speech has to be politically correct from a, a progressive or liberal point of view. I would encourage people to to show you know solidarity with Jerry Buell, show solidarity with the natural institution of organic marriage between a man and a woman by changing their Facebook status. Post on your Facebook status your support for natural, organic, traditional marriage. People have a right to do that, whether they're teachers, whether they work for a corporation, whether they're uh, unemployed, everybody has a right, especially on these uh, controversial issues, issues that are uh, polarizing issues and, and topics of public discourse and controversy. People have an absolute First Amendment right to share their positions. And, and in this case, positions that happen, happen to be the majority belief across the United States. It's the typical same uh, thing where, where people see uh, what they understand as a problem, and then they take a chainsaw rather than a scalpel to try to resolve the problem. And that's what we have here, because some people were uh, or could use Facebook as a method to stalk somebody, maybe harass somebody, or say inappropriate language to someone. Um, that obviously is the same, whether it's on Facebook or after school, wherever it may be, even during school. But in order to solve that problem, instead of Going to this with a scalpel, they went with a chainsaw and decided to just ban all speech completely uh, across the board. I would encourage you, if you are a teacher, uh, to find out what your rights are as a teacher, not only in this area, but Liberty Council has a brochure called Teacher's Rights on Public School Campuses. Teachers, unlike students, uh, have still a lot of rights. Students have essentially almost unfettered rights. I mean, they are required to be there. They have significant First Amendment rights. Teachers on the other hand, have to balance the First Amendment rights with the fact that they are an agent of the state. They are an extension of the state. So they speak for the government uh, in their official capacity when they're acted in their official capacity. But nevertheless, they have a right to talk about religion in the classroom. In fact, to ignore religion in our Judeo-Christian heritage is to ignore the history and the contributions of Judeo-Christianity in almost every subject matter. We have a brochure that goes through what the rights of teachers are in terms of wearing jewelry or clothing that has religious insignia, teaching about religion or even teaching uh, creation or um, any kind of origins issue in the classroom. So I'd encourage you to call Liberty Council at 800-671-1776 and ask for our teachers' rights on public school campuses brochure. Matt, you often hear uh, liberals say we have a secular form of government. Uh, that's actually not true. We, we don't have a secular form of government. We don't have a Christian form of government. We don't have a religious form of government. We have a form of government that is all inclusive of all of those mindsets and worldviews. And to say that we have a secular form of government, what they mean by that is that we have a government devoid of a religious expression of any kind. That is simply not the case. And, and even teachers, even people working in a school setting as official government agents, again, as we've said over and over again, they don't shed their uh, First Amendment rights at the schoolhouse door. Well, you can't talk about literature without going through historic biblical literature, and you can't talk about art without religious art. You can't talk about music without the history of religious music and how religious music has shaped the entire uh, genre of music. 
So I would encourage you to find out what your rights are as teachers. Call us today at 1-800-671-1776. You can also ask for the brochure uh, Teachers' Rights on Public School Campuses. We also have a brochure on Students' Rights on Public School Campuses. And we have booklets and we have other material and resources that's available for you as well. Go to Liberty Council's website, lc.org. You can text us with a contribution of $10 at 20222, subject line LC. Or you can give a greater contribution by going to the website, there's a lot of information there, our, our address. You can also make a secured online credit card contribution to help support Liberty Council's ministry. All that we do, we do pro bono, no cost, and we can only do that by your prayers and your financial support and commitment. You can also call us for more information at 800-671-1776. You have been listening to Matt Staver of Liberty Council. Our hope is to encourage and inspire you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedoms. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email update. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom. 